Section 11.4, the comparison test. Suppose that the sum of an and bn are a series of positive terms. If the sum of bn is convergent and an is less than or equal to bn for all n, then the sum of an is also convergent. If the sum of bn is divergent and an is greater than or equal to bn for all n, then the sum of an is also divergent. We're basically saying if we have two series and one is smaller than the other, and the bigger one converges, the smaller one converges, and if the smaller one diverges, then the bigger one must also diverge, because it's even bigger than the divergent sequence. So to prove this, let's uh, first consider that the sum is convergent. So sum is convergent, and an is less than or equal to bn for all n. We're going to show that the sum of an must also be convergent. So we've got some sequence, or maybe there should be really a bunch of dots, but some sequence floating above another sequence you can imagine like this. This top sequence is convergent, so it forces the bottom one to be convergent. So we're going to set Sn equal to the partial sum of the A sequence, and we'll set Tn equal to the partial sum of the B sequence. Since the B sequence is convergent, we're going to, or the, sorry, the B series is convergent, we will let T equal the sum of the B series. Since both series have positive terms, they are um, both the sequences Sn and Tn are both increasing. And we also have that this partial sum Tn tends to T. So that means that uh, Tn is less than or equal to T for all n. Since our Ai's are always smaller than our Bi's, we must have that the partial sum of the Sn's is smaller than the Tn's. So that means that Sn is less than or equal to t for all n. So the partial sums of the Ai's is an increasing sequence, and it's bounded above, so it converges by the monotonic sequence theorem, and therefore the sum of the An's converges. If we take a look at the second part of the theorem, if the sum is divergent and An is greater than or equal to Bn for all n, then our Tn tends to infinity, as we defined it over here, because Tn is increasing, and this uh, sum is divergent. But our Ai's are greater than or equal to all of our Bi's now. So that means that this partial sum of the Ai's is greater than or equal to Tn. So that goes to infinity, which means that An diverges by definition. So let's use this. How about we determine whether this series 5 over 2n squared plus 4n plus 3 converges or diverges. Well, notice that the denominator is dominated by 2n squared, so we should probably just compare this to 5 over 2n squared. Also notice that this denominator is bigger than this denominator, so this entire fraction is smaller. So we could take a look at the sum of 5 over 2n squared, which is the same thing as 5 over 2 times the sum of 1 over n squared, which is a p series with a p equals 2. Since 2 is bigger than 1, this p series converges. So that means that our series uh, 5 over 2n squared plus 4n plus 3 must also converge by the comparison test. How about the series L and K over K? Remember we did this series in section 11.3 with the uh, integral test, but if we look at uh, this series versus the series 1 over K, notice that this series is bigger than the series 1 over K as long as we look at K greater than or equal to 3. Now, similar to the uh, integral test, the comparison test actually does not require that 
n is less than or equal to bn for all n. We can relax that condition slightly as long as we um, relax it for a finite number of n at the beginning because remember we can just take any series and split it into a um, finite sum at the beginning for any terms we don't have to worry about and then the remaining terms that all clump up towards the end determine whether the series will converge or diverge. Adding you know, a couple terms at the beginning is not going to change if a series converges or diverges ultimately. So we can start at 3. So this series 1 over k, well that's just the harmonic series. In other words it's a p series with p equals 1. And however you want to think of it, we know that the series diverges. So that means that our series k equals 1 to infinity of ln k over k must also diverge by the comparison test because it's even bigger than a divergent series. Another test we have is the limit comparison test. Sometimes we can't always um, find a series to compare things to that's uh, smaller when we want something to converge and greater than we want something to diverge. So in those cases where we find something that we can compare but we can't exactly get those two conditions, we do a limit comparison where we take the limits of the partial sums, we take their quotient and we see if that's some constant. If it's some um, finite constant, then the series are kind of linked and either both converge or both diverge. So to prove this, let lowercase m and positive m and uppercase m be positive numbers such that c is in between them. So we are assuming that this limit is true, and now we're trying to show that a series both converge or both diverge. Remember that this limit is going to c. So that means that if we go far enough along these sequences, then this quotient a n over b n must get closer and closer to c. So for large enough n, that means that this quotient is uh, close enough to c that it satisfies this inequality. For you know some big n, you know any little n is bigger than that big n, far enough along the sequence. So that means that we can multiply the well, all three parts of the sequence of this inequality by bn, and we get this inequality. So that means that an is in between big M times bn and little m times bn. So that means that if the sum of bn converges, then multiplying it by some constant won't change it, so this thing will also converge. And now we can use the comparison test. We have ans smaller than a conversion sequence, so this series of ans must also converge. Similarly, if our series bn diverges, then so does the series from this guy. So then we have the ans bigger than a divergent sequence. So that means that the ans diverge by the comparison test. So let's use that on this series 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Notice that 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 is bigger than 1 over 2 to the n because subtracting 1 from our denominator makes us uh, a smaller denominator which makes a bigger fraction. But 1 over 2 to the n is a conversion series. It's geometric. So 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 is bigger than a conversion series. That tells us nothing by the comparison test. But if we set a n equal to 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 and b n equal to 1 over 2 to the n, then we can do the limit comparison test. Because just looking at how similar these uh, series are, we figure that it should still converge even though we can't do our comparison test. So we look at the limit of the quotient of these two sequences, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 over 1 over 2 to the n and that's equal to the limit of uh, just 2 to the n 
over to the n minus 1 because we just flip both. So this is equal to the limit of 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n if we just divide the numerator and denominator by 2 to the n. Well, as we go to infinity, this goes to 0. So that means that this entire thing goes to 1, which is greater than 0. Remember, to do the limit comparison test, we look for the limit of the quotient of these um, series terms to just be some constant that's greater than 0, some positive constant. So we also have that the sum of 1 over 2 to the n, as I mentioned, is a convergence series because it's geometric. And we have the common ratio r equal to a half, which is smaller than 1. So we have our limit as a finite number. So that means that if one of these series converges or diverges, the other one must also so because we have sum of 1 over 2 to the n as convergent, that means that the sum of the a n's, our 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 series, must converge by the limit comparison test. Let's take a look at this series now. Notice that we have 2n squared in the numerator, and we have a, an n to the fifth in the denominator, so it looks like we should use a limit comparison tests with 2n squared over the square root of n to the fifth. So let's set a n equal to 2n squared plus 3n over the square root of 5 plus n to the fifth, and we'll let bn equal 2n squared over n to the 5 over 2, which is just 2 over n to the half. Notice that for the comparison series for almost all of these problems, we choose you know a p series or a geometric series because we already know how to we already know when those converge and diverge. So let's take a look at the limit of the quotient of these uh, terms. So if we look at an over bn, that means we're looking at 2n squared plus 3n over the square root of 5 plus n to the fifth times n to the 1 half over 2 because dividing by 2 over n to the 1 half is the same as flipping and multiplying. So then this becomes the limit of 2n to the 5 over 2 plus 3n to the 3 over 2 all over 2 times the square root of 5 plus n to the 5th. We just multiply through the n to the half and the 2. So we'll simplify further. What we'll do now is divide the top and bottom by uh, this n to the 5 over 2 so that we can get rid of this and get rid of this. And we end up with 2 plus 3 over n over 2 times the square root of 5 over n to the 5th plus 1, and now we can take our limit. As we go to infinity, this disappears, and this disappears, so we get 2 plus 0 over 2 times the square root of 0 plus 1, which is just 1. So that's a finite number. That's our c. It is greater than 0. So we take a look at what happens to our bn's. Well, that's just going to be 2 times the sum of 1 over n to the 1 half, which is a p-series, 
with p equal to 1 half, which is smaller than 1. Because p is smaller than 1, we know it diverges. So that means that the ans also diverge. by the limit comparison test. Notice that when choosing the series for comparison, you want to just try to look at the dominant terms and ignore all the other stuff that's getting in the way. So we just looked at the 2n squared and then to the fifth. Another thing we can do with these comparison tests is uh, take a look at the remainder terms for our series. We can compare the remainders to get basically uh, estimates on those also. So if we look at 1 over n cubed plus 1, it looks like that's pretty similar to 1 over n cubed. And in fact, it is smaller than 1 over n cubed because it has a bigger denominator. So that means that the sum of 1 over n cubed plus 1 converges by the comparison test because that's a p-series with uh, p equals 3. So let's take a look at the uh, remainder term. I'll use tn for the 1 over n cubed remainder term. That way I can reserve rn for the 1 over n cubed plus 1 remainder term. Remember that from section 11.3 we calculated t uh, rn for the 1 over n cubed remainder term, which I'm now calling tn. And we saw that it was less than or equal to the integral from n to infinity of 1 over x cubed dx, which we said was equal to 1 over 2n squared. So this means that by comparison, rn, the remainder for 1 over n cubed plus 1, must be less than or equal to this remainder. So that must be less than or equal to 1 over 2n squared also. So this means that if we want the error for the first 100 terms, that'll be r of 100. And so that's less than or equal to 1 over 2 times 100 squared, which is 0 0.0005. I hope I said four zeros, but I think I said three. So let's actually try calculating this now. And by this, I mean the sum of the first 100 terms. So we'll pull out our handy dandy calculator emulator, go over to math, go down to summation, zero. And how about we use x equals one through 100. And we'll do one over x cubed plus one. So now we have our approximation, so let's put this away and we'll write that the sum of the series 1 over n cubed plus 1 is approximately the sum of the first 100 terms of 1 over n cubed plus 1, which is about 0.6 eight six four five three eight according to our calculator and with error less than zero point zero 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 five